this is Katie Weeks, your independent close to my heart maker. And today I'm joining with the Makers with Heart for another one of our mystery envelope challenges. This is one of our most popular videos each month. Okay, so this month the mystery envelope came from Amanda Ross over at Crafting with Amanda and uh, she sent a darling little card and then these different pieces. So let me read her instructions to you. Hello, lovely ladies. This month I thought we would focus on a stamp set. I have stamped images and cut out the critters from one of these days stamp set. I have also included leaves from the layered leaves then cut. You may add or use anything you want to create your project. My one requirement is that you highlight a coloring, highlight coloring a stamped image or coloring shading thin cuts. Doesn't have to be the leaves or critters that I've sent. It can be any that you have. I would love it if you used other stamps in your project, but this is a suggestion, not a guideline. Hope you all have a great summer, Amanda. So here's the critters that we have. These um, sentiments are all things that came from the one of these days stamp and thin cut set. And then we have these darling leaves that she sent as well. And when I looked at these stamped images, it made me think of two darling little ragamuffins that I have and they call me Nana. And it reminds me of when we go out picking blackberries. So we have enjoyed picking blackberries and eating blackberries this summer. And so I thought it would be fun to scrapbook some of these pictures. So I was trying to figure out what colors would work well. And I'm kind of focusing on these being some of my main images. And I'm looking at the blackberries and the ones that are not quite ripe. And I decided I would focus on the Cosette paper pack, which you look at this and you think, oh, that's pretty formal looking paper, very French or something like that. I don't know what the right word would be, but there's all of the different papers and the stickers, probably a little too formal for what's going on here. But I really wanted to pull out this paper right here, which featured the mulberry and it had those stripes. I didn't think it looked so especially formal. And then if you watch the Makers with Heart this month, our challenge uh, that was earlier in the month was focusing on using mix ends with a paper pack. So I'm gonna continue with that theme. And some of these papers, I only have scraps left, but here's the selection of papers that are on the mix-in paper pack. So I'm going to be pulling in a couple of these that I can use as well. I think this one right here will work very nicely. So you're going to see me use those as well. So I'm going to be using a pattern, pattern number 17 from the new Make It From The Heart volume six that you will be able to get on September 1st. And this is kind of the layout that I'm going for, only I'm going to probably flip the whole thing upside down. And I'm going to be looking more at something like this and I'll switch that dovetail upside down as well. And I've chosen all of my papers, so we are going to start with cutting those. First is this darling mulberry paper that has the ticking on it. We're going to save this zip strip and use it at the end as well. If you haven't watched the videos from the Makers with Heart from when we use the mix-ins, make sure you click on the playlist. I'm going to have it linked up here and you'll get to see how we use mix-ins with different papers and different paper packs. And uh, I want to tell you that I'm using French vanilla as my base here and I'm following that pattern number 17 from Make It From The Heart, volume six. And 
Then I'm using Just Mixins from the current collection and Cosette Paper Pack. If you are enjoying the inspiration you're getting here, make sure you give me a thumbs up and please subscribe if you have not already done that. Now I know there's a lot of subscriptions available these days. This is free. This doesn't cost anything, but you will get notifications every time I upload a crafty video, especially if you ring that bell and turn on all the notifications. So here you'll see the layout that I have. I flipped the whole thing around so that I could put the pictures in the orientation that I wanted. And the next thing I'm doing was deciding on mats. I decided on using the Harbor cardstock on some and Vineyard Berry, which is an old retired cardstock that we have, but it worked perfectly with those blackberries, especially the ones on the bushes that were not completely ripe. So I tried to use the Vineyard Berry when it was on something that would layer on the Harbor cardstock. Okay, so here I am using my shimmer brushes and I started with the toffee shimmer brushes and stamps from dimensional elements and I just put a bunch of that shimmer brush down on my all-purpose mat and then inked up my stamp basically with that shimmer brush um, so that you get kind of a glittery stamped image that almost looks like dirt, you know, like you're out there and the girls were getting dirty and I just did that all over, especially on that French vanilla. And I think that goes along with those messy little critters that I have, just to have some almost distressed or messy kind of mixed media in my background. So, I'm laying these out again, trying to decide how I'm going to do it. And then I did not want to clean this stamp off with my chamois. I did not want the sparkle remaining on my chamois. So I just used wet paper towels. And then I brought in another stamp from that same stamp set. And now I'm using a brand new shimmer brush and I untwist it, pull out that little yellow piece, and then I twist back on until I feel a little snap and then I give it a good shake and then I squeeze it till it starts coming through. And that's how you start a shimmer brush in case you haven't done that before. Now this stamp is more like polka dots and it's the mulberry shimmer brush. And so I'm just going to stamp this around some other places. I do overlap a little bit of that mix in sage colored strip that's on my layout and also onto some of the others, especially the mix-in paper with the toffee. You will see I end up coming in with this stamp with polka dots and I stamp all the way across that strip where I have the plaid toffee stripes and even the toffee polka dot piece of paper and I do this on both layouts and it kind of went along with that one strip of toffee with polka dots it gave me more polka dots to tie in on this layout so I really like how that came through and gave another dimension and tied it together and I think I'm going to do the layout just a little bit different I'm going to have one picture higher and one picture lower. By lifting the one picture a little bit higher, I'm going to put a group of the stamped images along with some of those leaves at the bottom and then the one that I move lower, I think I'm going to put a couple of the leaves coming out from above that picture. That's the plan at this point. And I was trying to decide on which of the stamped images to use. Here I am cleaning up my mess with a wet paper towel again, not my chamois. And when I looked at them, there was a little fox, there was a little bird, um, and there was a little squirrel. And actually, all three of those animals would be found over at Grandma's farm where we were picking the blackberries. So any of those were good choices. Um, here I'm just distressing the edge with that toffee ink pad. 
And I thought I was going to go with the bird and the fox at first, um, but I do end up changing and bringing in that squirrel later. You'll see that in just a few minutes. And then I think I'm going to use one of those sentiments in my title. So I went ahead and cut off um, one of the stamps and it says just one of those days, I believe. And I think I'm going to go ahead and distress the edges of that too, just to make it stand out a little bit. And um, you'll see how I layer it on in a few minutes. So I'm distressing the edge of that. I actually end up dropping the middle of it in there and I just kind of patted it, the whole thing, just to give it a little bit of distressed look since there was an extra smudge that I had not counted on. So then I'm going to um, layer this down. I have it on the Harbor cardstock, which then is bordered again on that Vineyard Berry, just to keep it going. Then I'm bringing in that Cosette sticker sheet and using a couple of these that coordinate nicely with my layout. And then I'm going to use the olive green Le Pen to write the word picking. And then I'm putting little polka dots on the letters. And then I'm going to bring in a black journaling pen to write the word blackberries. And again, I will use the little polka dots on the letters as well. And I kind of like how that turned out for a title block. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is put a little foam tape under that sentiment that I cut out. And I'm actually making it go a little bit higher than that French vanilla block. And once it's all assembled, it says just one of those days picking blackberries. Just kind of a everyday occurrence if you live on a farm or you go to grandma's and pick berries. Okay, so the next thing I did was with my all-purpose mat, I was trying to water down the Harbor ink pad and use it with my water brush on that little bird. I ended up with too much water and ruined it. Um, it's not the best ink. I think it was stamped with mocha, so it was smearing really bad. So I found that if I use my shortbread and toffee and I used just the tiniest bit of espresso, I was able to color the squirrel and the fox just fine, but I barely used any water with it. I just squeezed the stamp pad and used the little bit of ink that was in the lid and it did not, I didn't squeeze out any extra water from my water brush and it was the perfect amount of dampness to do a nice watercolor on these stamped images. And so that worked perfect. Now the next thing I'm doing was I was experimenting with the shimmer brush on that all-purpose mat and then I'm just picking up some of that shimmer brush with a plastic baggie on my hand and I am putting it down on those thin cut leaves that Amanda had sent for us. And so the colors of the shimmer brush that I ended up using were, let me see, I believe it was green apple and um, I think that was it, maybe some sage, um, but I think it was mostly the green apple shimmer brush that I used. And then here I am going in and coloring on my Bitty Sparkles and on my Clear Sparkles. And I'm coloring them with my Tri-Blend markers. I pulled out the Purple Blend, the Bright Pink Shades, and the Lavender Blend. And I put them on a whole bunch of Bitty Sparkles. And I'm building these little, um, well, before I do anything, I let those dry. And then I am adhering all of the leaves and then the little animals. And I popped up the animals with some 3D foam tape. And it just gives it a little bit extra dimension under those animals so that I'm ready. Once I have these clusters all done, I will be able to use my sparkles. And I think you're going to love what I did with these sparkles. So just hold on. And putting these animals down, I like those leaves in between. But after I was looking at them for a while and I got the other leaves down above the other picture, I thought I, 
it's like the leaves were kind of floating up in midair and I needed to do something to ground them just a little. So um, I really like how they look with that shimmer brush that was put on with that um, baggie on my hand. And using the adhesive on this all-purpose mat was perfect because if there was any residual adhesive left, I could just kind of rub it with my hands and get it right off of my mat, and I had no problems. So here I am going in and putting down a bunch of those little berry, uh, those little sparkles. And what I decided was to build some blackberries with those sparkles. With the clear sparkles, I made bigger blackberries. And then with the bitty sparkles, I used um, them in little clumps and I made smaller blackberries. I made one on the title um, section as well and I loved how those turned out. So here you will see, I came in again with a shimmer brush and then another one of those stamps from the Dimensional Elements stamp set. And I decided I could use this to look like some grass across the bottom of my layout. And I stamped it underneath those leaves that kind of looked like they were hanging up in thin air. And I wanted to ground those a little bit. And then I did it across all of both sides of the layout. And here's a final shot. I will leave a playlist at the very end. Make sure you check out all of the makers with heart to see what they did with their mystery envelope as well. Please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video and make sure you subscribe to my channel and you hit that bell to turn on all the notifications so you'll be notified every time I upload a crafty video. Please leave me a sweet comment below and share this video with your crafty friends as well. It's free, why not share it? Have a great day.